Hey guys, listen up. Starting your own business and need a little help? Well, you're in luck. Your host, Jamie Lee, right here on So You Want to Start a Business, has tips and strategies every Wednesday at 9 a.m. to help make your business dreams a success. So get out your pen and paper, grab a cup of coffee, and let's get down to business on So You Want to Start a Business. of so you want to start a business and today i like these sessions they're the deep dive sessions of kind of taking the topic that we uh kind of hit on during the interviews after we get to know the interviewers and stuff and kind of taking a topic and, and doing a deep dive uh giving you more detailed information on on this, the subject uh so with that happy to have steve back with us uh and steve bring it on Hey, Jamie, thanks a lot. And, and I think there's a lot of value in what you're talking about here. A lot of people don't really understand the connection. You know, uh, your audience, they want to start a business. They want to have a business that's running, that's productive, that's fruitful. Uh, you, you know, we can make the bottom line. We can stay in the black and things of that nature. And you, you might think, well, you know, what's the connection? Uh, you know, I go to church on Sunday or maybe I have. And, and, and what's the connection? And I think you're right. There is a huge connection in all of that. And I could just kind of unpack that for a few minutes. And there are two ways, Jamie, I think really to kick this off with. One is debunking uh, this, this idea, this myth, which is really found in a lot of Catholic traditions, that you have your sacred life and you have your secular life. And, and you know, sacred would be, you know, everything the priest does, everything I do at mass, everything I do at church, every, you know, everything I do on Sunday. And secular would be everything else. It, and that's really kind of a religious man-made idea. What, what we need to understand is that when we're following Jesus Christ, there is no division between the two. Everything we do uh, is sacred if it's done for God. And, and, and that's the way God wired everything up. What's interesting, uh, when you look at the ministry of Jesus, uh, one of the first things he taught in, in Mark chapter 115 is that the kingdom of God is at hand. Some translations, Matthew says the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The point being is that when we think about God, sometimes we think about, you know, I'm going to do my life now and then I'm going to die and go to heaven someday. Well, the truth of the matter is, is that it's this ongoing relationship now. The kingdom of God uh, is not fulfilled yet but we're operating within that now. So any place where I'm being obedient to Christ, whether that's in my doctor's office, my garage where I'm fixing cars or Whataburger, uh, if Jesus is Lord, the kingdom of God is being uh, worked out in the here and now. And then I think a lot of it comes back to uh, just the reality of who we are. We touched on this and you know, earlier in your amazing podcast, but the fact that we are created in the image of God God's creative, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And when Adam and Eve were created, they were doing things. All that to say is we're wired up in such a way that we are to produce in, in whatever realm that God puts something on his heart. And, and, and I think without getting into the weeds too much, there, there are really six ways, uh, you know, especially for your listeners who want to take notes that I think we can unpack this with. And, and, and I think the first one is not just simply that we get to create, but we are expected to create. Um, you know, the, the, the phrase is the Protestant work ethic. And that's something that's, that's, you know, central to Western progression, Western civilization. In essence, it, it, it's simply this, that, that we were created by God in the image of God for a purpose. Therefore, it's expected we're going to work this out. So we don't rely on other people to take care of us. We have a mission to do something. Uh, it, it, Jesus talked about, it's called the, the parable of the talents in the book of Matthew, where the master gives each person these various amounts of money. The expectation is that we are to do something with it. So when we're looking at a business, what we need to understand Whatever it is, even if we are an employee, we are expected to, to produce, to do something with it. In addition to that, 
Um, what we need to understand that work itself is good. In other words, you know, a lot of people say, you know, hey, uh, I'm just going to work until I retire. I, you know, anything, I just don't want to work. And, and, you know, it's this idea that work is something that's bad. But again, you go back to the original creation and you're looking at Genesis chapter two. Uh, Adam was tending the garden. Ad Adam was given the opportunity, the creativity to name everything, to tend everything. But the point being is that work it existed before sin came into the world. So, so work is really a good thing. I think a third thing is the objective or the goal. In, in other words, the goal for work is not to get money. The goal for work is not for retirement. Those are just simply tools. When you think about it, money is just simply a tool to do something with. Uh, sometimes people say that money is the root of all the evil. That's actually not in the Bible. It's not. Money is a tool. Now, what is in the Bible is that the love of money, it's in the book of James, mm -hmm. the love of money, that's what's the root of all evil. So in one sense, if our only goal in work is to get money, that actually might become a idolatry for us. And the truth of the matter is the more we hoard money, it, it actually doesn't, it, do, it doesn't make us happy. You know, there's a lot of wisdom, and I want your audience to know this, there's a lot of wisdom about money and finances and how to organize things in the Bible, particularly in, in, in the book of Proverbs. But what's interesting, even though there are verses about savings and the nobility of that and the wisdom in that, there are a lot of verses that talk about the, the, the pit, the plight, the danger of hoarding too much. That will actually rot our soul. And Jesus actually told a parable uh, called the rich young or the, the, the rich fool who was blessed abundantly and he saved it all up for himself and then he died and that money didn't go with him. So we need to understand that work is good, uh, but the goal is not just simply to make more money. The goal is deeper uh, than all of that. And with that, with our goal, ultimately it, it, it's for God and it's for other people. You know, what, what are we doing for other people? Um, there, there's a book in the book, a verse in the book of Philippians, chapter two, verse four, where Paul says this, that we are not looking out for our own interests, but the interest of others. Are, are we engaging in business just to make a buck or to elevate our status? You know, look at me, I've got this great business. Or are we engaging this business with this, this goal, this attitude, this drive of what good can I bring into the world? Um, you know, one of my favorite illustrations of this is, is Guinness beer, you know, the Irish beer. And, you know, I, I'm not a big beer connoisseur, but I think the story of this is interesting. Uh, Arthur Guinness is the guy who started that. I, you know, I forgot the exact date, like maybe 1759, you know, started this, this business of producing this beer in, in Ireland. When you look at the historical context at the time, the, the drinking water, well, it wasn't filtered. The drinking water was bad, so that meant that people only had a few options. They could drink the water, which was polluted, or they could drink hard liquor, which led to a lot of them getting drunk. And, and Guinness's desire was to create this, this ale, this beer, that wasn't hard liquor, but it was healthier because it had been brewed than the, the water. So there was a goal, not just to make money and make an empire, but to produce something that would help people. Arthur Guinness was actually a very strong follower of Jesus. And a lot of people don't realize that. They think of, you know, Guinness beer. Well, the founder was actually a, a serious follower of Jesus that wanted to help people. So we want to ask, you know, how, how am I, what am I doing? Is it, what is the good in this for others? And then also just thinking about the reality that, it, that in a real sense, um, it's an act of worship. You know, what I do on Sunday morning with my, my church family, what, what I do when I'm flipping burgers or I'm, or I'm doing the books, am I doing the books to, to cut corners or am I doing the books honestly? Because that in and of itself is acknowledging God, worshiping God. So everything we do is, is for the glory of God. And maybe finally, 
And, and this might apply to more who are employees than those who are employers, entrepreneurs, who are, who are starting businesses. Just this reality check at the end of the day that, that Jesus is boss, not me, not, not, not the guy that's ahead of me or the woman who's ahead of me. Now I report to her, I need to do a good job, I, I get that. But again, in the New Testament, Paul makes this observation in Colossians, whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as working mm -hmm. for the Lord not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. So as, you know, I kind of want to wind this down. I just want your people to know uh, that there really is a connection uh, in, in everything they do. And when we look at starting a business and we look at doing it from God's principles, it can actually be successful. Now, we may have to reframe what we're thinking. You know, if our goal is to make a million dollars, you know, maybe we're only going to make two or three hundred thousand. And we need to say that's good, understanding that God knows uh, what he's doing. But th there's there's a connection to all of this. And and, and I mean, I mean, I'm even thinking of situations where people did not take uh, divine direction in how they do things. Um, I was even thinking the other day about the Great Depression. You know, we're, we're about 100 years uh, past the Great Depression in the 20th century. And you look at all of the problems that people dealt with. It was because, you know, I know the stock market fell and all that, but it was because of principles that were more about greed. And then you look at the Dust Bowl in the, the Midwest where the Depression hadn't really hit yet. You know, farmers were plant, planting the same fields over and over and over and over again. Which is interesting because you look at the Hebrew principle where it talks about, you know, every seven years you let a field, field lie fallow so it can, you know, regenerate. So it's an illustration of people just saying, yeah, I'm going to do what I want. And, it, you know, ultimately it'll, it'll come back to, uh, to, to bite you. It, um, but I just want people to see that there is a divine connection. And without getting into you know, too much time here, I also want us to know that there are theological implications to all of this, even the way we do government and things of that nature. You think about communism and socialism. Well, the idea is we're not creative, we support the state. You think about republicanism, de de democracy, capitalism. The idea is, hey, I've been given a creative spirit I'm going to do something with it that will create, that will bless others, and it will be, you know, reproducible. What's interesting that the capitalism that we know today actually started in monasteries in, in, in the Middle Ages. Um, a guy by the name of Rodney Stark is, uh, does a lot of writing on this, and I, I would point your uh, listeners toward him. But again, I just want everybody to know that there are connections to everything we do. With, uh, with Jesus Christ, and that really applies to the way we do business. So I hope that's helpful. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, my blog is kingdomology.com. Uh, I've got a, a newsletter on that, and I wrote a book called Confessions, uh, Finding Hope Through One Pastor's Doubt, where I touch on some of this. But I hope that's helpful. Uh, be encouraged, mm -hmm. everyone. Be strong. Uh, God loves you. And I'll just leave it at that. Great. And, and uh, just to touch on one of the things that you kind of say that I, we kind of in the teachings or the the idea of people who want to go into business, uh, whenever you start talking about the idea of it's not about the making the money. It's the part of of the work that you're doing and stuff like that. And that's to me like what I like to say and a lot of people say is the idea of find what you love and find a way to make it work and not only I in like that it. idea yeah, yeah it's it's the part of find what god the gifts that god has given you that you love and show him the praise of thank you for giving me the these talents and i'm able to use these talents to be able to pre to pass it on to others you know uh, of being able to share your gifts that you've given me to others and I think that that's like the that. biggest yeah. part of yeah. whenever someone talks about as far as uh, religion and uh, business and when, what, what to find to do whenever you go into business. That really hit home with your, sta your statement there is the idea of, of your, 
you're not necessarily doing doing it for the money you're doing business is an idea of being able to have that freedom and leadership uh, of doing your own thing without being under the prote protection of a uh, of an employer and having that faith in God providing for you and the idea of doing and using the gifts that God has given you to be able to present and help others. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, because that's like for that. me, for me, my business, my business is in marketing and th my business name is business lifeline services. In mm. other words, I want to be the lifeline for any business that is either looking to get started or having struggles or to grow the next thing. And I don't do sales. I've, I've talked to several people about this and some of the people is I don't do sales. I love to talk just like I talk on here. Uh, I love to talk and experience, learn about the experience of other business owners uh, and, and, and to see what they've experienced whenever they're running their business. Uh, I've yeah, had the, yeah, the statement like from people like, like are, at some point, are you going to tell me what you do and what, what you want me to buy from you? I'm like, no, that's not exactly what it's about. You know, at some point, I'm not going to sit there and just throw, well, I can do this and I can do that. If it doesn't have anything to do with what your business is, it, yeah, the, the yeah. audience that you're going for uh, to where that's what God has really uh, led me to do. And part of the reason why I started the channel uh, and everything and wanting to talk about this is the idea that. I was always so scared to start a business, being a, a mm. single parent and kids at, all the time, and the idea of am I going to lose time with them? And, but it got to the point that my kids are older now, and it and it really hit after the end of the that relationship and stuff like that, and going back to God and the idea of of it's my time, it's my mm. time to to concentrate on me and what God has has in store for me, I guess you could say. And the biggest thing that was being from a small town, and I don't think that a lot of people kind of understand this, being from a small town and you see people with the dream of, of owning a business and then not knowing how to, the things that are available to them to run that business. To do it, yeah. To be able to, and then they just go away and then they feel like they're crushed that whether they think that God let them down or what was I supposed to do that they're to be able to have that, that idea of that there are people that just want to help, you know, yes, I charge for some things. I do have a business, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the yeah, idea yeah. of the, that the main thing of it is the idea of, of that communication, the building of the relationships. Uh, some of the things that I do, I outsource. I don't want to do that necessarily the work. My, what I feel that my part is in this business is building those relationships, letting people understand that if, if I'm here for them as a person, not as a, as a business owner wanting right, to sell right. you something. Right, right, right. And, exactly. and I think that, touch, yeah. and I, I, that just goes back and kind of spins around to the idea of when you're looking for your business, what's God leading you to? Mm -hmm. What gift is it that God has given you that you love so much? Just like an artist, oh my God, I wish I was an artist. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but 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 that is not a path that God led me, <laughs> led me to. For the people who understand, but people think that oh, I can't make money that way. It's not about the money. The money will come if it's meant to. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. but it's the work and the idea of of what God, the gifts that God has given you, uh, to present to others, uh, and the way that you present them and treat the others as, in your business. It is the big thing, or at least that's yeah, my little two cents worth. Yeah. So with that, I, I love the, I love the, I, this was a conversation that I really wanted to, was looking forward to and was wanting to have that, uh, get everything scheduled for the idea of, of people always saying, am I doing God's work? Well, I mm. gotta be a pastor to do God's work. No. It, exactly. Yeah. It, look at the job you're doing and be proud of the job you're doing, even if you're not happy because of, of the way that you do the work and that's a business owner or like you said an employee or anything else you're you're a you're a god of christ or you're a child of christ uh mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and how you represent that in, in your day-to-day -day life so yeah yeah so with that I, I appreciate the time i think that any anybody should be able to listen to this and, and get a lot about it and, and to, we always talk about the feeling if you don't come away from this with the feeling uh 
of yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing better. If you don't, then maybe you should reevaluate the way that you go from your day to day life and, and the job that you're doing and what you want to do in your future. What what is God leading you to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to and that will bring you the happiness that you're looking for in life. And no, I'm not a pastor. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that is spot that, on i love it yeah but thank you thank you steve i appreciate the time and, and all the teachings that you've done and and thanks for coming on well jamie thank you and you just keep up the good work on your end i appreciate it hopefully we can keep on and keep in touch yeah all right thank you and and uh, again everybody if you like this type of uh, content uh if there are different things that you have any questions about Leave, make sure you like, subscribe, and, and leave comments. We always love to leave, see the comments. So with that, thank you. God loves you, and have a great day.